You want to a life transforming experience? As Pastor Prince Abba brings you God's word with deep insights and power. God bless you. Hallelujah. Um, this is the month of February, and uh, usually in February we have a, a lot of relationship series we have a lot of um, issues on love we deal on issues that relate to um, matters of the heart so this morning we are going to be addressing a few issues relating to love hallelujah hallelujah and um it's going to run like this till the end of this month and also till the beginning of next month and all through. But all through February and somewhere in March, we're going to be dealing on the issue of marriage, the issue of love, the issue of relationship, because this is one of the vital um, components of your life. That if it's not well addressed, every other thing you are doing in life can crash. 100% of your happiness in life is dependent on who you marry. 100% of the joy and peace you have in life will come from who you spend the rest of your life with. And um, a a lot of people take time to prepare for career, take time to prepare for success, take time to prepare for their business exploits, take time to prepare for all kinds of, you know. But one of the areas people are failing at preparing failing to prepare for is this area of marriage, who to spend the rest of your life with or relationship. You ask most people how they are preparing for marriage. I tell you, it's not yet time. If you want to be a doctor, you study medicine for seven years and after that you practice. You want to be a lawyer, you study for maybe five years in a law faculty, then you have one year law school, one year youth service. Put together, that is seven years, then you're called to back. Then you start practicing as a lawyer. That's seven years. Now, people can change career. You can study law for Seven years, practice it for five years as the case may be, and afterwards change your career. You can change to something else. You can, there are people who have studied law who are now doing engineering. I know people like that. They are doing a differently, completely different course from what they, you know, studied initially in school. But it's not that way with marriage. You don't change life partner. You don't change family. Marriage is an institution of a lifetime. So if you study for seven years or four years or five years, as the case may be, to practice in a particular field of life, how much more an institution of life where you don't graduate from? You graduate after seven years of studying law. But you don't graduate from marriage. Faculty of law is an institution. Faculty of social science is an institution. Faculty of Medicine is an institution. Marriage is an institution. You can graduate from the others. You can't graduate from marriage. So if you're going to spend your whole life being married, if you're going to spend your whole life being with a man or a woman in the house, don't you think this is one of the most key areas of life you should give attention to when it comes to study? Okay. Let me also lay this foundation. The biggest goal of the devil is to destroy the family institution. Is to destroy marriage. Once the devil gets at the family, he has gotten a society. Once the devil gets at the family, he has gotten at the society. Every crisis you see in life is traceable to family crisis. Every crisis you see in society. That children turn out right. That people turn out well. That society is free from you know, crime, free from social devices and all of that, is because the family is stable. Once the family system goes so, the entire societal framework is in shambles. 
Because everybody you see in the society comes from a family. Everybody you see in society comes from a house, comes from a home, comes from a... Of course, marriage is the only way to build a family. You can't raise a family until you have put the framework of marriage in place. And marriage must be lawful. You can't take somebody and start living with her or somebody and start living with him and call him uh, your husband or your wife. It must be love. It must be legal. So marriage itself is a sacred institution. Marriage itself is a lawful union. And that is the only way to raise a family. Once you have raised a healthy family, imagine you live in a state where you have 100 families. 100 families coming together into society. If the 100 families are not healthy, what do you have? An unhealthy society. Is that right? 100 families are not healthy, are not sane. There's marital crisis, divorce, the husband not agreeing with the wife, um, parents not agreeing with the children, children not moral, and all of that. If you have such a family unit or family system, if you release that system into society, what do you have? You have a whole network of society that is a mess. So if there is any institution that you must take out quality time to build marriage, I miss everything you're building. You must ensure that you start learning. Because every one of you here, if I ask you, if you want to be married, you say yes, you want to be married. Who doesn't want to be married here? Put up your hands. You don't want to be married, put up your hands. Okay, you want to be married, put up your hands. Some of you will be this year. Some of you will be next year. Some of you will be in three years' time. Some in five years' time. So this morning, I'm going to try to address something very, very important. It's something I call the ten tests of marital compatibility. Actually, this is, you know, an excerpt from my book titled Diamond Ring. So I will start the journey today and it's going to continue on Wednesday, continue on Sunday, and it's going to go on and on and on until the month runs up, even up to next month's match. So the earlier you take this serious, the better for you. The sum total of who you are, a greater part of it was influenced by your family. I want to say it again. That the sum total of who you are, a greater part of it has been influenced and shaped by the family you were born into. If there's any reason I am the way I am, it is principally because I was born in a family. Family unit is like a mold. If you've gone to a block industry before and seen how they mold blocks, one of the things you find out is that every block takes after the shape of the mold from which it is cast. People take after the shape of the mold. Recently, I've come to study people critically before I judge them all. Because you see, a lot of people in society, some look fine, makeups, look tall, handsome. But when you look at their behavior, you wonder why this person is this way. If you trace critically, you find out something went wrong in the family that person was born. I've seen people who their own problem is inferiority complex. Some people, their problem is insecurity. Some people, their problem is, you know, um, shyness. You can't talk in public. Go and trace the family from which that person has been born. You'll find out everything that person is carrying out is a reflection of the kind of family that person is born. The father or the mother in that house must have inflicted certain injuries in that guy or that lady that is responsible for how that person turned out. Okay, the Bible says train up a child, not train up a man. Train up a child in the way he should grow. So that when he has become old, he will not depart from it. You know why people cannot depart from certain habits? It's already a part of them. It's something they started cultivating in them from when they were small. 
when they were babies, when they were children. The thing grew in them. If it is inferiority complex, maybe you grew in a house where you are not affirmed. There's nothing you do that makes any sense. There's nothing you do that... I have a daughter like that. It took me work to get that thing out of her. Every time you see her, she's always, she's always looking for who to pity her. Looking for who to sympathize with her. Looking for who to... She doesn't have self-esteem. She doesn't have self-confidence. She doesn't have self... Her image has been distorted. So, I, I didn't understand it at first. Beautiful girl. But when I started relating with her closely, I said, ask her some question. How did you relate with your father? What kind of relationship did you have with your mother? Then I found out from the day that girl was born up to the day she graduated from the university, her father never told her, I believe in you. Her father never told her, I love you. Her father never told her, you are beautiful. Her father never told her, you are wonderful. So everything she knew from the father was negligence. Neglect. Everything she knew from the father. And she's been carrying wounds. You know the truth is that in this series you'll be hearing things. It's called diamond ring. The whole month up to March. So you may be thinking it's about marriage, marriage, love. I'll be dealing with wounds. I'll be dealing with some heart issues. Because until you are complete, hey, you can't complete another. You know why people compete? They are not complete. They are trying to impress. The guy is short or the girl is short. She now thinks self-esteem is in high heels. It's incompleteness. There's a vacuum. It's a sole problem. So this period will be dealing with heart issues, heart matters, sole problems. The best you can do is reach out to others and make sure that there are people who are part of the service this period. Oh, there are some people, they don't get these things cured out. They carry it into marriage. Then they damage the marriage. And when they damage the marriage, they start managing the marriage. They, they carry it inside. Not everybody you see looking touched, looking mixed up, are actually alright. There are people who are sick inside. Carrying so sickness, so disease, so problems. And they are trying to use makeup to cover it. Cover. You can't cover a sore disease with makeup. Suit and tie can't cover it. Makeup can't take care of the issues of the heart. We have to be practical to deal with them. So you see in this program, one of the things I will do is that we are even going to create discussion groups. I'm trusting God if we finish this one, if I have time, we may create one here. But if we don't, most of the services will create discussion groups. Then we start talking. You will just break into groups and share ideas with other people. What has been your experience growing up as a young person? What battles did you experience in life? What are the things you wish you could correct if you have the opportunity? You know, certain important questions. What mistakes have you made in life? We start tracing why those mistakes were made and all of that. So that we sort out these things. So you can have a healthy life. You can have a healthy home. Because your happiness is going to depend on that. Okay. So let's deal with this. The 10 tests of marital compatibility. 10 things that when you see... We may not finish the 10. Maybe I'll do 5 or do 3 or 4. Maybe, you know. I'm sure I won't finish the 10 because it's too much. What are the things that you should look out for first in yourself? Because when we talk about the issue of marriage, relationship, people are in a hurry to look for the right person. I want to marry the right person. If I ask you now, who do you want to marry? You start mentioning the list of people you want, the kind of qualities you want, the kind of, uh, you know, attributes you want. They are all good though. But if those attributes are not in you, even if you marry the right person, you can damage the right person. So, successful marriage begins with being the right person. Successful relationships begin with being the right person. If you're not the right person, you can attract the right person. 
If you're not the correct person, you won't attract the correct person. Let me ask you a question. If you are asked to marry you, will you like to marry yourself? Because there is nobody who knows you better than you. I want to ask that question again. If you are asked to marry you, will you love to marry yourself? That is, they bring another part out of you and say, marry this guy. Because within you, you know you are a cheat. Within you, you know you tell lies. Within you, you know you are not faithful. Within you, you know you are a gossip. You break trust. You break truth. If they bring that side of you, if they bring you out, the original you you are, and say, marry this person, will you like to marry? Because you know the person you are marrying is a cheat. Will you like to marry that person? You know that person cannot keep truth. That person breaks, breaks trust. Would you like to marry that kind of a person? Certainly not. You would not want it. So, how do you get the right person? Be the right person. Then you can attract the right person. You first of all have to be the right person. To attract the right person. That's where the success of marriage begins. I don't know if I'm talking to the right church. That's where the success of marriage begins. I will read you a scripture all of you know. Then um, I will take it down from there. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. You go around society, you see a lot of, even people in the church, deviants, you see all kinds of callous people, people who are not complete, people you can't trust, people you cannot, you can't hold them accountable. People who, who you can't commit something in their hands and they are steadfast. People who are not reliable. All of them are offshoots of family failure. Because the family is a place for building values. The institution that is responsible for molding values in a child is a family unit. And this is one of the you know, mandate God gave me. He said, aside every other thing I've called you to do, rectifying the issue of family is at the center of your calling. How do you raise a strong church? Strong families. How do you raise a strong nation? Strong families. But of course, family cannot go right until the marriage is right. So, the marriage must go right. The family must go right. Then, society can go right. If my father didn't give me that foundation, if he didn't give me that upbringing from when I was younger, I would have been an embodiment of issues. If my father did not give me the required trainings and teachings, if he didn't bring me up, not only in the fear of the Lord now, but also with values, in the acquisition of values, my life would have been upside down. If there's one example my father has modeled, is stable marriage and family. So I watch his family. I watch his marriage. I see marriage that is peaceful, full of love, full of kindness, full of compassion, full of understanding. I see a family that is stable. We don't see our father, my father and my mom quarreling. We don't see that. So it becomes hard for even the siblings to quarrel. I don't see my father beating my mother up. So it becomes hard for me to beat my own wife up. Have you seen fine guys, very handsome guys? You'll be shocked to know they batter their wives. Go and trace. You'll find out the guy learned it by observation. He learned it by observing the father did it. Okay, check some girls who have a problem. 
attitude. Go and check. They must have learned it from their mothers. Check. Daddy talks one. She talks ten. I am telling you I'm an expert in this thing. I've seen it happen. I've, I've had a lot of people come to me with their marriage issue. That's the rainy one now. Like, the issue I am facing every day is broken homes. That's the raining thing now. Broken marriages, broken homes, broken... Mm. And, 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 and the one I'm doing latest now is, when somebody comes to me, I study the guy. I want to know his family. I've checked everybody who comes around me. I check the family. There's something that guy is doing that is a... Go and check. He has a resemblance with what the family is like. That's why we are hitting this thing. We will so hit it on these things. Then if you know there are areas in your life, maybe you had fa- family foundational problems. You're going to have to go back and find out, okay, I think this is where my father and my mom missed it. And begin to trust God to address it so you don't have a repetition of that same thing in your own family. Can I hear an amen? Okay, let me read it for you. Genesis chapter 2 verse 18. Mm. Your marriage will be the best one, oh. And the Lord God said, it is not good for the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. I, I talked to you about the principle of first mention. There's a law in the Bible. A law of life actually is called a law of first mention. You want to know the foundation on which everything is laid. Genesis. Genesis is where the first family was built. You want to see the first families in Genesis. The first marriage in Genesis. Almost all the principles that governs life, if you go to the book of Genesis, you find them. Like you want to know the purpose for the creation of man, you find it in the book of Genesis. Everything Jesus came to restore was Genesis. Because that is where God's blueprint, that is where God's design, description for man, for family, for life, for everything is. But what Jesus came to restore was the book of Genesis. He came to restore the, the original plan of God for creating the world, for creating man, for creating marriage in the beginning. So now look at God. This is God saying this, you know. He didn't say it's not good for the world to be without lawyers. Have you seen beautiful, handsome lawyers who are not responsible? The guy goes to a law court. He can, he can quote the Constitution, Constitution 101, um, according to section 10, um, verses 19, Chapter 300, quote on unquote, Lega Maxim, Nemo Judex in Kaswa, or the Otter and Patem, or the whatever. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh. I've seen medical doctors, they are wonderful. There is no issue they cannot dissect. They are even smarter than Ben Kassin. When they go back home, they are beasts. So God did not say it's not good for the world not to have medical doctors. It's not good for the world not to have lawyers. It's not good for the world not to have singers. He said it's not good for man to be alone. This is God saying this thing, not you. They will make him a help. Okay, look at it in my own translation. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper. Suitable. Suitable. Now, I can preach about a lot of things from this scripture alone. But now, I want to concentrate on this issue of compatibility. It's called suitable. The word compatibility there is suitable. 
And what I want to show you is not something you can't be looking for in people. You have to put it in you first. Then when you see it in people, it attracts. If it's not in the person, you cannot even attract in the first place if it's not there. He said, I will make him a help suitable. So it is not enough to marry a helper. You also need to have suitability. There are two things there. In one of the services, I will show you the four purposes of marriage, not today. The word helper there is ministry. I'll make him a help. That's ministry. Somebody who will help you with your vision. Somebody who will help you with your calling. Somebody who will help you with your assignment. Somebody who will help you with your, you know, with what God has called you to do in life. That's help. But it's not just help. Okay, I can show you three things in that scripture. Number one is that it's not good for man to be alone. So there was need for companionship. One of the reasons God made woman for man is for companionship. Friendship. Then number two, help mates. Somebody who will help your ministry. Not just your friend. Not just somebody who is your honey. Not just somebody who is your sugar pie. Not just somebody who is your yummy yummy. Your lollipop. He said, I will make you a helper. So she's a companion, but she's also a ministry material. She's also helping you out with ministry. She's also helping you out with your vision. If you have a good woman who is suitable for your ministry, your ministry goes to the next level. It's not necessarily ministry in terms of church. What's your vision in life? Let me use somebody who you may not want me to use because it's not a Christian. Jay-Z. Can you see the combination between Jay-Z and Beyonce? Hello? Hello? You see that combination? Jay-Z is a music person. Beyonce is a music person. You see how the team blends. So where Jay-Z is talking of how to invade China with his music stuff, Beyonce is excited about it. Because he's wired for the same thing. That's help. Then suitability is compatibility. That is both of you live together. Both of you, you have found in yourself certain attributes that can make you guys work together. If you have a friend, companion, you have companionship. If you have a ministry material, but you don't have certain suitabilities, those compatibilities, my friend, go and think carefully. That's why you must work on yourself. You must work on yourself. When you work on yourself, it becomes easy to know if the person you want to marry has it. So, let me quickly show you uh, Amen. The first compatibility you must have. If you are going to say, yes, I do to a man. Maybe one year time, two year time, three year time. For a person like me, I don't need to waste my time thinking about somebody. Once it's not there, it's not there. What are we doing? I say I've seen all kinds of things, my friend. And there's this girl I used to, you know. There's nothing she doesn't have. Oh, she read in the UK. Have jeeps. Beautiful. By the time I show you all those things, now you will see that you cannot forgo one for the other. There are some of them that are major, others are minor, but all of them are important. There are some that are major, some are minor, but all of them are what? Important. So she has beauty, elegance. If she walk out here, if she dangles here for you, If she dangles the thing here for you, you get lost. She's beautiful, but not beautiful. Very beautiful, but not beautiful. That's what the word beautiful is. Beautiful is not your facial 
beautiful is what radiates from within. Don't worry, it's going to get exciting in a moment. Beautiful. But she comes around me, I keep resisting her. And my siblings will be on my neck like one who is always uh, the one doing the arranging. He will convince you why it must be this girl. This girl is a diplomat. She is a lot. She has degrees. She has masters. Uchipa PhD. Can't you see the drift she's driving? The girl flies over. She has gone to all the nations of the world. You see, pastor, know your kind. The kind of ministry God has given you is a ministry that is in touch with the world. You will talk with Donald Trump. You're going to talk with um, King Gadassi. You know? <laughs> you talk with Queen, Queen Elizabeth of England. <laughs> you, see, you need this kind of girl. Not the one you will say to go and represent you in New York. She will go there and be looking at a skyscraper. Say, hey, Chimo, thank God I married pastor. Hey, blood of God, is this skyscraper? Eh? Hey, you see, no, you need somebody who's exposed. But what if the exposed person is arrogant? What if she's not a homemaker? You talk one. As you're still talking, you say, listen to me, my friend, I'm talking to you. The girl. You see, that one is not built to fool. She's just beautiful. So let me take them one after the other. The first thing you must look out for in the woman you're going to say, be my wife, BMW. Or the man you're going to say, yes, I will. Nowadays, the fun of marriage or the fun of whatever, a guy and a girl is how the guy proposed. A criminal can propose where my friend. How the guy proposed. Then he, this, he took me to crunches. Then he bought ice cream. He put ice cream. Nah, latch ice cream. No, 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 latch ice cream. Nah, latch ice cream. Nah, latch ice cream. Before he marry him, him, ring a bam. Ring just entered inside my mouth, and I was like, wait, is it what is? This could be stone. Oh my God. I removed it. Oh my God. Who did this nonsense? Wait. You guys are stupid. Why did you put ring inside this thing? And the girl came. I'm sorry, man. I don't know how it got in there. Why you're still nagging the girl? The guy just kneeled down. And said, baby, Oko. <laughs> it has been in my heart to tell you this. And you are there pretending you don't understand. Tony, what is it? What is it? And Tony, what are you doing? What are you doing? Is this one of your setup? <laughs> this year is his year. <laughs> what are you doing? And he's like, will you marry me? And the guy is like, oh Jesus. That's what trips them now. The style of proposal. But after that, what next? The gift he bought you. After that, what next? What do you want in a guy? I want a guy who has a good job. He has a good salary. His salary is not 400k. I'm not married. I didn't come here to suffer. Um, he must have a flat. He must live in a three-bedroom flat. And he must have a flat screen on the wall. Yes, what next? At least he must have a Camry car. There is this story of a guy who was online with a girl. They were chatting. The guy sent his picture to the girl. The girl didn't say anything. The first one I will tell you is this. Um, okay, I think it's good I tell you this one first. A guy sent a post to the girl, a girlfriend or something. Dear, are you at home? She pressed laughing. You know that laughing now? L O L. Laughing out loud. The girl didn't say anything. The second one he pressed. He said, What are you doing now? Press L O L. Why are you not answering me? L-O-L. 
Have you cooked the food? LOL. Eh, hey, how much is that your Brazilian hair again? 150,000. She replied. The guy now replied, LOL. <laughs> the guy now said, Do you want to give me the money? LOL. <laughs> Why are you laughing now? LOL. Then she asked the final one. Please, when should I expect the body? The man replied, Now your papa dear. <laughs> Okay. Number one compatibility you must look for in that man or woman you will finally marry. Spiritual compatibility. Is that person a Christian? That's where it starts. Is he born again? Is he born again? Spiritual compatibility. Spiritual Compatibility. Does that person have any relationship with God? That's where the success of marriage begins. Because you are not married for you alone. You are going to bring seeds into this world. That's what the Bible calls the seed of the righteous. That means to produce righteous seeds that will become righteous inhabitants of the earth. The man and the woman must be righteous. That's spiritual compatibility. I'll show you a few scriptures to back up what I'm talking about. Psalm chapter 1. Look at what the Bible says in the book of Psalm. Psalm chapter 1, verse 1. Very interesting scripture. How happy is the man? See happiness, oh. Happiness comes from this thing. See it. How happy is the man who does not follow the advice of the wicked or take the path of sinners or join a group of mockers? He said, how happy? Another version says, how blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly? If you are a Christian, you can't marry an unbeliever. So if you are attracted to an unbeliever as a girl, you are in church. The guy who is wooing you is an unbeliever and you are tripping for him. And the girl who you are wooing is an unbeliever. And you say, don't worry, she's going to repent with time. You are in for big trouble. The first criteria, you cannot marry an unbeliever. People who have done it have wrecked their homes. I'm telling you, have wrecked their homes. Some people who say, eh, he's a nice guy. She's a very nice girl. I think with time, he's just, he's just that he needs to, you know, be followed up. Hello? Let that follow up be done before you get married. Let it be proven that this guy is born again. And I'll show you how to know that a guy or a girl is born again. Because people can fake it. I know of a story of a guy who walked into my, my parents' church in Benue State. This guy just came in to church with a fine Camry car. Fat has some shops in the market. Dark, handsome guy. Just that one girl, a Dickens daughter in my, fa- in my, in my church, in, those, in the church my father worshipped in Benue State, went to buy one or two cosmetics from him and the thing started there. Chemistry exchanged. The girl invited the guy to church. But of course, the guy has been asking the girl, and the girl was like, no, 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 I cannot, you don't go to church, you are an unbeliever. Now the guy repented, pretendedly, and came to church. Not only did the guy come to church, the guy joined department, joined men's fellowship, or youth fellowship. Everything they do in church is the first to bring money, bam, and drop. The guy went through baptism, for this girl. A new red light was blinking somewhere. Others couldn't see. Every one little thing they call in church. We want to build, so we are needing one million. He will come out. I'm giving half of the million. This girl was somewhere. Head was big in men. My man. They did every, 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 every. After some months, they joined them. They got married. It didn't take 
three months they divorced. Hello? I say it didn't take three months they divorced. The guy started beating this girl like there was one Sunday she came to church. This side was swollen. This side was swollen downwards. This side was swollen forward. I said, is he human being they battered like this? A man's hand did this thing. There's a man who don't need to buy punching bags. Wrestlers. You don't, you know, if you're a Hokogan, you don't need one. Just marry one. You don't need to buy. Marry one and hang her in your house. Just use her and do training. That's what they did to her. That battered her. I knew that marriage was going to be hellfire. But she was carried away by setting makeups around. She did not test this side. He's coming to church, but is he really born again? I'll show you a few things when you see a man do. You know the man is faking it. Or the woman is faking it. Or things you will see a man or a woman do. You know this one is really genuine. Is that person's faith based on your own faith? Or is that person's faith based on Christ? Is it based on God? Does this person love the Holy Spirit? Is this person motivated by the things that Jesus did on the cross? Or is he only doing things because of what you are? He, he wants from you. When you hear a girl saying, I'm only doing this thing because of you. I'm only coming to this church because of you. I'm only coming to this church because of you. <laughs> Watch it. Don't be excited. Any day your coming to church ceases to be because of somebody, your work with God has just begun. You didn't hear that. Can I say it again? Any day you're going to church ceases to be because of somebody who is in church, your work with God has begun. That's why James asks, what shall separate us from the love of God? What is that thing? Because even if that guy backslides, you backslide with him. We, I, I, there's nothing I've not seen in this church. One girl jumped in here one time, brr, because of a guy. I knew the thing. People are speaking in tongues. You will join and speak in tongues. They finish service. You will follow the guy. I would warn. Don't join this guy again. Stay clear from this guy. Concentrate. Do your work in ministry. Serve God. Yeah, she will join. They change strategy. They finish church. The boy will walk out first. And go <laughs> go go and wait by the junction. The guy will follow. Daddy, bye bye. As though they are not, but I, and you know I'm tall. I, I sit in heaven and the head is my footstool. So I will just stay here. I'll be watching from this angle. I can see the road very well from here. I will see them by the roadside. They have networked. Then I enter my car. Boom, as I'm going. Their walk will change into holy walk. The guy will start me. You will think the guy is impacting the girl. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> the guy fired the guy, the girl followed too. Because every day you see them at crunches, they are city chef, they are Mr. B. The girl's fate is based on the guy. So anything that knocks the guy off, knocks the girl off. Is somebody hearing what I'm saying? The faith can't be based on what another man has done or what he's doing. What I do cannot even purchase your salvation. It is what Jesus has done that can't purchase your salvation. So putting your faith in me is like crashing your whole redemption. Because my own faith is based on Jesus. If your faith is based on another man, then your faith is second-handed faith. Can I show you another scripture? Second Corinthians chapter 6, 14. Be ye not unequally yoked Together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Yes, go down. And what communion has light with darkness? Uh, go down. And what concord had Christ with Belia? Or what part has that, has he that believes with an infidel? Yes. And what agreement has a temple of God with idols? For ye are the temple 
of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people. Can you see this? See God clearly stating it. What fellowship has light with darkness? You cannot be unequally yoked with unbelievers. You can say it does not matter. It matters dozens of matters. Amen. Amen. Let's, let's, let's see Judges chapter 14 verse 1. Judges chapter 14 verse 1. I show you a story you already know. But I'll tell you that a great man was made nothing because of the choice of who he married. Can you see that? A man who, who was destined for great things just because of the woman. He, he said, it. and Samson went down to Timnat and saw a woman in Timnat of the daughters of the Philistines. He's an Israelite in Nazarene. He went to the daughters of the Philistines. Philistines are uncircumcised. My own translation uses uncircumcised. You will see it even when you go down. Daughters of people who are Babylonians. People who are not born again. Go down. And he came up and told his father and his mother and said, I have seen a woman in Timnat of, yes, of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore, get her for me for a wife. Get her for me to wife. He wasn't looking for a girlfriend, a wife. But see what this man ended up carrying. Go down, verse 3. Then his father and mother said unto him, Is there never a woman amongst the daughters of thy brethren? Hey. He said, Is there no woman among the daughters of your brethren? That what your brethren. People who are in the same sheepfold with you. People who are as born again as you are born again. People who are as righteous as you are righteous. People who are saved as you are saved. People who are circumcised as you are circumcised. He said, are there no daughters of thy brethren or among all my people that thou goest take a wife of? Yes. The uncircumcised. Of the uncircumcised Philistines. And Samson said unto his father, I don't care what you are saying. No. This is your business. Get her for me. For she passed me well. <sighs> I've seen people in choices of who to marry. They come to their pastor. Pastor, that lady. God showed her in my dream. I saw it. You know what I'm saying? I saw this girl in my dream. When I saw her in my dream, she was carrying a plate. The plate was full of indomie. She was bringing it to me with tears in her eyes. And she knelt down. I said, Sammy, I am thy wife, thy exceedingly beautiful wife. What does thou want thy servant to do for you? I shall cook for you. I shall love thee. I shall be here for you. I shall wash your clothes. He said, Papa, I saw it in my dream. Pastor, I saw it in my dream. There's nothing you are telling me that is going to work. That guess an unbeliever. He doesn't know God. Leave her alone. And like, that you don't worry. See, she's not a Christian. So don't worry. The, the seed of Jacob in me, the seed of Abraham in me, is superior to the seed of the devil in her. Don't worry. She doesn't speak in tongues, I know. She doesn't go to church. She doesn't care about church. When you talk about prayer, she turns off. Don't worry. By the time she wakes up in the morning and sees me praying, keep up, she, the, the fire in me will just transfer to her. Don't worry. You are going somewhere to happen. You are heading somewhere to happen. You carry a, an unbeliever and say she's going to be your wife. You are heading somewhere to happen. You carry an unbelieving brother and say he will be your wife. He still drinks. He takes you to Jeliza and he gives you moth. And no, my baby is a Christian. Don't worry, we're telling him hero there. We're telling him God on spark. Let's spark with the atmosphere. We're telling him good. And you, you still say, the only weakness he has is that he drinks. But Ken is a nice guy. Don't 
worry. You will find out that an unregenerated man is not nice. No matter how good he acts. Can you ice cake that is not cake? No. Go and bring cake pan. And ice the cake pan. And put it and let's do happy birthday. By the time we finish removing the ice, you'll find out what is inside is not cake. It's pan. So people carry ice and put on them. And you're looking at ice. The cake is not there. Because he carries Camry. And he's good. You say he's good. Now, Isaac, the cake is the substance. He is he spiritual. Is he born again? That's the cake. He's not there. You are not saying I do. Can't even say, let, okay, let's be going. Let's start a relationship. No problem. Let's just, let's just be going. He's an unbeliever. You are going to dig your own grave with your hand. Okay. Let's find one more scripture and close this chapter. First Kings chapter 11. I'm trying to give you case studies. So when you go home, you have scriptures to go and brood on. So you know that it is not possible. The Bible didn't recommend it. First Kings chapter 11. Let's look at verse 1. Good. But King Solomon loved many strange women. <laughs> I like this guy. He's fun to be with. Solomon. Oga solo. Solo. <laughs> One day I will show you the revelation of Solomon. The Bible according to Solo. Don't worry. He said, but King Solomon loved many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh. See the kind of women this guy loves. <laughs> he comes to church. Worship is going on with all these church girls, church rats. Oh, he goes to nightclub. Hey, hey, hey. Said, Those are the real babes. No one will balance it. I know there are most ladies who are looking for guys outside because they think the church guys are boring. <laughs> boring. Amen. <laughs> and you see the devil's trick. I will balance it. I will create the balance. You see the balance. Because you are bro, lose your, you lose your sanity. I will show you the balance. Because there's something Solomon didn't see in the church that made him went outside. Yeah, most girls are doing it. They come to church and serve their living God. When they serve, is that Romeo who is outside? That guy who works in the bank. Or that guy who works in the oil company. He's not a Christian. He smokes, he drinks, but man, when the guy raps, the guy raps you, you, he just takes your head and turns it upside down and you are wondering, He's like, see, yeah, most girls have told me church guys are really boring. And most guys have told me church girls are so boring. He's hearing my, hearing my, hearing my sake. <laughs> That's all they know. So, they, so when we get to the third point, you will see that thing that you need to get. Amen. Because that's what Solomon was looking for. He said, but King Solomon <laughs> loved <laughs> many strange women together with the daughter of Pharaoh. Go down. Women of the Moabites, see, uncircumcised people, Ammonites, Edomites, Zidonians, and Hittites. These are people God instructed Moses and Joshua to go and clear. Clear them from Israel, clear them from Canaan, then take the land. These are people Solomon said, these are the ones I love. When they wear that, their mini skirt and come out, man, the way they, they put it on me, you know. <laughs> so what happened next? Go down. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, you shall not go into them, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn your hearts after their gods. No, I told you who is a Christian should have turned their hearts. No, God would have said, I'm, I'm supreme. My power is more supreme. So marry whoever you want. As long as you marry, you just change. If that's the case, we wouldn't have been marrying church girls. I would have gone and looked for one prostitute and marry. When I marry, she becomes one again. Because the power of God in me can change her. 
Hey, listen. There's a difference between the gifts of the Spirit and the fruit of the Spirit. I can put on you now. You fall now. Carry gift. If I blow on you, you can't carry fruit. Sit down. You can't carry fruit. If I blow air on you, you won't carry fruit. You can carry gifts and lack fruit. So Solomon, the Bible says, surely they will take your heart after their gods. Solomon clave unto this in love. Kai. What a human being. Go down. And he had 700 wives. Seven hundred wives. Father, thank you for Solomon. Wives, princesses, and three hundred concubines. Solomon fulfilled the scripture. He said, one will take one thousand. Two will put ten thousand to flight. He did, he took one thousand women. Even if you marry from all the local governments in a boy state, can you marry up to 1,000? My, my, oh my. One woman, one man. 700 wives. 300 concubines. And he did wedding for the 700. Almost all the life of the guy it was wedding he was doing. Every day they keep printing the invitation card. So someone is bringing you, is this Solomon again? <laughs> yeah, bring you invitation card. One guy just, please, my father said I should give you invitation card. I said, is it Solomon? Said, Don't worry, with that invitation, we are coming. 700. Imagine this guy waking up in the morning and strolling around his estate. Because the guy was extremely rich. So he's strolling. Just strolling, going around the vicinity. He sees children playing. And playing football. Then one just comes to him. Good morning, sir. Good morning, your majesty. May you live forever. He looks, he says, yeah, 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 yeah. How are you? How are you? Eh? How are you? Yeah. Your, your face looks familiar. <laughs> and, and the girl like, what's your name? What's your name? He says, sir, my, my name is Ruben. My, my name is Ruben, sir. He says, eh, Ruben, 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 Ruben. What, what's, your, what's your surname? My, my name is Ruben David, sir. He said, eh, hey, hey, okay, okay. Your face looks familiar. Who is your father? Who is your father? He said, sir, you are my father. He said, eh, hey, me? Oh, are you serious? Okay, good to meet you, my son. Good to meet you, my son. <laughs> Imagine. That's how a man got wives and populated his whole kingdom with children. He said, wives, princesses, Juebenine, and 300 concubines. And his wives turned away his heart. Verse 4, quickly. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wife turned away his heart after other gods and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God as was the heart of David his father. The next verse. For Solomon went after Ashtoreth, the goddess of the Zidonians, and after Milcom, the abomination of the Ammonites. Verse 6. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as did David his father. Why? Spiritual incompatibility. And finally, Proverbs chapter 31 verse 30. Quickly. That is the danger in saying that is the guy you want to marry. He's not a child of God. You go and take him, you're in trouble. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. Favor, deceitful. Beauty, deceptive. Very, very deceptive. And the Bible uses the word vain. You know what that word vain is? It's perishable. Beauty is perishable. Her hips are out now. Her breasts are out now. Don't worry. Junior is coming. Junior will take his portion. The husband will take his portion. Other kids coming after will take their portion. When they have finished, 
taking their portions. Everything goes like bathroom slippers. Then you understand that beauty is vain. And see your grandmother in the village if you know when she was young. Have you not seen burial brochures with the burial of these old women? They put an original picture before they die. Then they put that their sweet 16 picture, black and white. Have you seen it before? And like, so this woman was looking like this before. No, yes, she was. My grandpa who just died. You need to see his picture when he was a boy. You see his punk. You see his cute red lips. Now, old is dead. Beauty deceitful. So if what is catching you for the guy is, oh God, he's handsome. What is killing you for the girl is that she's fair. Beautiful. Everywhere standard. The front, what is before is powerful. What is behind? Azoka. You know, all of all those. If that is all you look at, mm. and you don't check, does the man fear God? Does the woman fear God? If that thing is not in place, you are in trouble. Let's close up on this chapter. Spiritual compatibility. That means this man must be spiritual. He must be born again. I, 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 I show you a few things on this very, very quickly. You cannot get married to a man who is an unbeliever. Write it. Few striking points. Don't play with this thing. Any day you want to make that mistake, you go back and look at your diary and see this thing and say to you, number one, you can't get married. I, I didn't say you will not. You cannot get married to a man who is an unbeliever or a woman who is an unbeliever. Okay, let me also show you nothing concerning this spiritual compatibility. Because most people think it's just anybody who is spiritual. It's not anybody who is just spiritual. There is spiritual compatibility in the generic form of it. This person is a believer. He, he believes in God. But there's also spiritual compatibility in the sense of familyhood. Church familyhood. i give you an example. This is Priestin Hughes. We have different denominations. Church, what should be the same God? But they have different orientations and doctrines. There are things that are all right for priesting hills to do that is not all right for deeper life. You have a big trouble if you marry a deeper life girl. Except that girl is ready to be flexible and submit. When you are finished putting this your Brazilian hair and you just come out and the girl ties her whole head and uses thread to tie the whole head. Keche binini as she sees. She comes to church as she sees all the sisters. You're like, God, God has opened my eyes. I see Jezebel's. I, I see mommy water. Mommy water, you have, that girl is mommy water. Yeah, that girl in the choir, she's mommy water. I know that you, you are mommy water pass. You see that thing can't balance. There's certain things where you are teaching, maybe on faith. She's trying to understand. Or you pray in tongues. It's like, hey, hey, you can't be praying in tongues anyhow. You pray in tongues when the Spirit of God enters you. I've heard them say things like that. But the Spirit of God is already inside of you. Is he outside? So when you pray in tongues, when you are praying, you are praying. The Spirit of God will be there watching you. Like, wow, she's coming up. Hmm, he's coming up. You pray, pray, pray. In the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, enter me. Keep praying, keep fanning. I'm watching you. And when you pray to a level, those who are going, mm, okay, it's time to enter. It enters you. Then you now start speaking talk. Worry, my worry, my second, second, second. Is that how it works? He's already inside you. He's already inside you. So you see the conflict. You look at the family household of faith. The first thing Samson's father asks Samson is that is there nobody amongst your brethren? Amongst your brethren. It may not be from priestly hills directly. But are there people who share the same doctrines? We share. People, when you sit down with and talk, it's the same ideas that flows. But more preferably, from your household of faith. Then, another one is that there are people who say they are spiritual. If you check their spirituality, it has nothing to do with your own spirituality. I give you one example. You cannot wake up one morning and say, after all, church is church. Our marriage is over sweetness. I must marry Jehovah's Witness. They know the Bible. Then you are a Pentecostal. Should I use the word Pentecostal? You believe in the Holy Ghost. Believe in the baptism of, of, of the Holy Ghost. Believes in water baptism. There are churches that don't believe in that thing. 
You believe in speaking in tongues. You believe in the healing power of God. There are churches who don't believe in that thing. Denominations that don't believe in it. You can't say because we are spiritual. It's the same God. You go and marry. You are in trouble for doing that. So you check all those things also. You check all those because your, your differences will conflict. It will conflict. Do not marry someone who does not have a church. I'm giving you a point you need to ponder on. Do not marry someone who does not have a church. A church he is committed to. If he's a church hawker, watch him. Do not marry somebody who does not have a church, not just having a church, a church he is committed to. People can vouch for him. People can say, we know that brother. We know that sister in the choir. We know that brother in the ushery. Ah, faithful brother. Faithful sister. Because if you are going to be giving out a marriage for a person like me, before I give your hands out in marriage, I will check your records. I will trace. How has this person served? I will check your longevity in service. I will check your diligence in service. Because it's how well you serve in God's house that will determine how well you serve in your home. There's no two ways about it. There's nothing like arranging marriage. Some people had come here to me before, said, not even once. Pastor, can you do a quick marriage? We're in love. We want to marry. I said, it doesn't work like that. You're going to pass through premarital classes. I have to check and know that you have a stable character, a stable life. I see your commitment in God's house. I see how you are serving God. I see how you are serving, relating with the brethren. Then I can say, this guy, this girl, she's good to go. But just jumping from here and there and expecting one pastor to just call one girl and give you. It doesn't work that way. Except that pastor doesn't know what he's doing. So a guy comes to you. The first thing you must check. A girl is it you are interested in. Check. What is her church? Is she just saying that is my church? What is her involvement? Is she in a department? Is she faithful? Is she diligent? Is she loyal? Is she humble? You check all these things. Is she full of the Holy Ghost? Is she born again? Do not marry someone who does not have the covering of a pastor. Hey, that's your biggest undoing. Hey! Oh my goodness. The girl, the guy, does not have somebody he or she can call my pastor. Should I tell you the implication? He or she does not listen to anybody. And she won't listen to you. She does not value authority. Do you know marriage is just collapsing or the death of two wheels? That's what marriage is. You bring your will, I bring my will. We collapse it together and kill it. But the way God also ordained marriage is that the man takes the position of the head. The woman takes the position of the subordinate. That is what he calls submission. The instruction is that man should love the wife and the woman should submit. So if the man is the head of the family, the woman is meant to submit under that headship. But how do you know a woman who will submit under a man? Check if she submits under her pastor. Then how do you know a man who will love his wife? Check if he submitted under authority. He said, husband, love your wife, even as Christ loves the church. Because Christ is the head of the church. So the same way the woman is meant to submit under the man in the house is the same way the man is meant to submit under an authority. The authority of his pastor. The same thing with the woman too. Both of them actually come under, under that covering. So if you're going to get married, check. What is your relationship with your pastor? Are you the one pastor calls you take off? Are you the one pastor sends on errand you take off? You will carry it into your home unknowingly. Do you have a pastor, a mentor? Not just our pastor or oh, pastor Annie. A pastor you have a relationship with. Whether as a male or a female. Who is molding you in certain areas of your life? Who spends time with you? A man you honor. A man you revere. 
<laughs> Those days when marriages were very, very sanctified. It's not now all kinds of things are happening. People are getting divorced, infidelity, marriage. And it's not then. Do you know how we used to get married? They go to pastors. It's not now. You see one girl, you just go and catch her. Madam, will you marry me? You are a fool. Or the girl talks, the guy talks to the girl. And you, hey, I'll think about it. You finish thinking about it. You conclude, and you go and tell the guy, yes, I'll marry you. You didn't tell your pastor. Your marriage will fail. That's what you call ancient parts. Ancient part doesn't mean uh, uh, mediocrity. It doesn't mean obsolete. It doesn't mean tradition. Those ancient parts are values. Values are not ancient and they cannot be modernized. Values are not ancient. And they can't, when you hear the word ancient part, the word part is value system. Principles. The Bible talks about walk in my path and be ye perfect. So there are ways things must be done. If you have a pastor you have a relationship with, there's no guy who opens his mouth and talks to you, you won't tell him. You'll go and tell your pastor, Pastor, this guy talked to me about marriage. Oh. Pastor, this guy has been asking me, he's been chiking me. And that man may see things you are not seeing. You are under authority. You woke up to the man. Sir, there's this girl I'm admiring. There are things that man may know about the girl you don't know. Because he sees things you don't see. That's what relationship does. Any girl you go and talk to about marriage and the girl has concluded with you without the consent of a pastor, fear the girl. Any man you talk to about marriage or any man who talks to you about marriage as a girl, the first question you ask him, this thing you are telling me, does pastor know about it? And if a girl talks to you as a man like that, start watching that girl. That girl has a relationship with a man. That girl is going to give you peace at home. It means that if things go wrong in that family, things happen, you know already where to run to. Because you have a covering. So that's another thing under spiritual compatibility you must check. Does this person have a pastor? If you've not started learning how to build pastor son relationship father son relationship you have to go and cultivate it if you have not learned it there's nothing that happens to me now i cannot run i have a father a man i call my spiritual head there is nothing a woman does to me if i get my if i'm married my wife does something i don't need to handle it myself I have a spiritual father. I have a spiritual mother. I know who to call. I know where to run to. I know who to send. I know who to send. I know. It's not a hard thing. My wife just misbehaved now. I can't handle it. I don't need to bother myself. I just call Ma. I say, Mommy Sarah, this person is giving me some headache here. Can, can you do some surgery for me? Just put her in the next available flight. Go and meet, go and meet Mama. By the time you sit with Mama, you think, just dissect some things. The same thing with my wife. Same things are happening and all that. Maybe she doesn't know how to relate better with me. She doesn't know how to tend to me and all that. She knows who to run to. Maybe Mommy Sarah. Maybe Pastor David. And like, Daddy, I don't know my husband recently. I don't. You see the discovering. Don't ask you because you can speak in tongues. You can fix everything right in your home. Hello. Hello. I don't know if I'm helping you now because I'm correcting things that would have taken you a lot of years to handle early enough. Okay. Do oh time, Lord Jesus. Mm. Okay. Do not marry a man who does not love God. That man must love God. That woman must love God. And how do you know? Check the man's prayer life. Check the man's fellowship life. Check the man's word life. Check the man's giving life. You see what I'm mentioning? Check the man's word life. Check the man's prayer life. Check the man's giving life. Check the man's fellowship life. How does it take fellowship? Check the man's um, worship life. 
when you see these things, you know this man is good to fly. You know this man is good to fly. He must love God. Do not marry a man who does not give to God. If the man or the woman is stingy with tithe and offering, he will not give to you. He will be stingy with you. Don't make the mistake of marrying a man who does not give. Don't make that mistake. A man who is not a giver. A woman who is not a giver. Don't make that mistake. First, how do you know this person will give? Check how he's giving to God. In tithes, in offering. Okay. I take the last point and we are good to go. Character and attitudinal compatibility is a second compatibility. Character and attitudinal compatibility. Quickly, Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10. Quickly, give it to me. Proverbs 31. Verse 10. Let me deal with that as fast as I can and go. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. Can you see? A virtuous woman. Or a virtuous man. He said her price is far above rubies. You cannot price her. You can't price virtue. The first thing you must look for in a man or a woman you want to marry is the spiritual, the spiritual atmosphere that, you know, resides within that person. That spiritual compatibility. The second thing now is, what is this person? What is the substance of this guy? What is the substance of this woman? Now see what Proverbs is saying. Who can find a virtuous woman? For her price is far above rubies. See some of the virtues now. You will start listening, listening them. Verse 11. The heart of her husband does safely trust in her so that he shall have no need of spoil. Look at this. Go down. She will do him good and not evil all the days of her life. Yes? She seeketh wool and flax and walketh willingly with her hands. So one of the attitudes of a woman you see is industriousness. You see character now. She's industrious. She's hard working. She works with her hand. The next one. She's like the merchant sheep. She bringeth her food from afar. That woman is an exporter. She's an importer. Look at it. I'm showing you the attitude of the kind of woman or man. If you don't see these things, run. A woman who wakes up in the morning and she's still in bed by 9 o'clock. You are finished. A man who wakes up in the morning, he's still in bed 10 o'clock. You are a goner. He does not value work. He does not value industriousness. He does not value enterprise. You are finished. He's lazy. She's lazy. The next verse. She rises also while it is yet night and gives meat to her household and a portion to her maidens. So, young ladies who come late to church, you don't know what you are doing. She gets up early from bed. You are a girl in this church. You see the problem we have. Values are gone in our age. Gone. When I was still a schoolboy, do you know my mom used to wake up? Even she, it has come part of her. Sometimes she does that like, how does this woman feel doing this thing? She gets up three. Three, you hear her singing behind. And that three is when you woke up to go and piece your third piece in the night. That's when I wake up to go and piece my third piece. Or fourth piece. And she's already awake doing her house chore. And I just go back to sleep and go and lie down like one log of wood. And she's awake, baking floor. Baking cake, cutting her chinchin, fixing food. We wake up by seven to take our bath and prepare for school. Food is already on the table. These people, these our parents who were grown even from the village, who were grown from, uh, you know, they seem to understand these things better than this crop of children who are coming from this stupid Indomie generation. These ones, they are dropping in school in Range Rover cars now. They are destroyed their foundation. These ones they make Christmas hair for. And they give them a lunch box. Who gives you a lunch box in our days? 
And these schools who don't beat children again. Not to kill them. No, no little, even little flogging. The child does, he just touch the child. He goes like, Mommy, a DJ floods me. And the same woman will arrive at school the following day. Jay, come here. Did I pay you 240000 to flog my baby? You didn't ask, what did your baby do? There's a problem in this generation. Values are eroded. Where are the wife's materials? Where are the husband's materials now? Gone. Because we are living in in, in Indomie age. With the age of fixing nails now, it's a very hard thing for a lady. Give them broom now. Come and sweep. <laughs> my nails, my medicure, my pedicure. I made it for 6,000 naira. And you ask her to come and scrub the rug. If you marry that one, she will tell you to employ a house help. She's not your house help. You didn't marry a house help, you married your wife. If you want somebody to cook your food and iron your clothes, employ a house help. What does it tell you? Values are gone. But see what this description is telling you. It's a household. You see, she gives me to a household and a portion to her maidens. Yes, go down quickly, quickly. She considers a feud and buys it. Hey! She considers a feud and buys it. She's an investor. She's into real estate. With the fruit of her hands, she planted a vineyard. So it's not everything, honey. Uh, let's go and buy uh, tomatoes. Honey, onions. Honey, this. Honey. She's so industrious that even at her backyard, she has ugu. No, we don't have it again. It's shop right. All shop right. Ne uzi now. We think those things are wrong. She has tomato farm. She has small ugu backyard. So she wants to cook emergency food in the night when you know markets are closed. She's not going to... Only don't worry, I planted something behind. Like, are you really serious? So yes, I have fugu. Let me go and cut them. You know, can prepare some little dinner. That's a virtuous woman. Go down. She guided her loins with strength and strengthens her hands. Go down. She's not lazy. She perceived that her merchant, her merchandise is good. Her candle going not out by night. Keep running, keep running. She laid her hands to the spindle and her hands holds the distaff. Go down. She stretched out her hands to the poor. Yeah. She reached forth, she reached forth her hands to the needy. You see that she's compassionate. She's a giver. She's a giver. How many ladies are like this again? No. Oh, she's a giver. She is not afraid of the snow for her household. For her household are clothed with sacklets, with scarlets. She maketh herself coverings of tapestry and clothing in silk and purple. So you see, she's adorned in royalty. You see that color purple there stands for royalty. She dresses like a queen. She dresses in royalty. It's not waking up in the morning and you enter your wardrobe. What you saw to wear is the one that reaches you here. I went for a graduation party. I saw children, children. Everything they were wearing. Small, small girls. Some 16. You see the way they are growing tall like cassava stem. It's half, half. Half, half. Half, half. Half, half. I felt tempted to go and draw some down. But all tall at once. Go naked. Half. Modern schools. Because you are a student of one here, British. And graduation. You see all of them. See the woman the Bible described here. He says she naked herself. Coverings of tapestry, her clothing is like is silk and purple. So she's well clothed. She doesn't dress nude. Well clothed. That's a virtuous woman. Today you think virtue is in how hot your mini is. Hey, you won't attract virtuous men that way. If the only thing that attracts men around you is your calves. And your booze. Yeah, I don't know. There's some children when you're talking this in the video. I mean, you know what I'm so, 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 talking about? I'm being serious. We're not playing. Are we playing? No, we are dealing with real issues. That's the generation we're living in now. It's about booze and box. 
is booze and bots generation and makeup generation. And men are falling for it. And everybody who is singing is singing Sheikh Uku. Sheikh Uku. Uku ka ne ba ka nisi. How many of you know those songs? <laughs> I heard the worship leader did clubbing, did clubbing, did clubbing, did clubbing. And after he did clubbing, came to church on a Sunday to lead praises. Oh, lift your hands and give him praise. He's worthy. Oh, 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 give me key F max, oh please. Oh, 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 hallelujah. Just lift up your hands. Begin to call him sweet names, oh God. The next thing that came out from his mouth is, oh my ladies. Kukere. <laughs> and the whole church responded, Kukere. God has anointed me to take over this generation. I know what is wrong with us. I'm not going to be part of that confusion going on on the altar now. It doesn't matter how you dress. It doesn't matter how you behave. It matters. God is in, it's the heart God search. It's not the outward appearance. When you saw the girl dressed new, then your body started responding. Was it the heart you were responding to? Was it the heart? No, I've not responded to the way you look. It's the heart I've seen. Okay. You see clothing. Go down. These guys who even go around looking for all those girls with cuffs and big henna and they wear all kinds of things. When it gets to the issue of marriage, their eyes start searching diligently. No, the guy has been with you for three years, four years. You are still giving him hot. Everyone you wake up, you are still hot for him. But, he has not said, will you? There's something he's looking for. He won't tell you. Can we finish this thing first? Her husband is known in the gates when he's seated among the elders of the land. This man's popularity increases because of a woman. So they see a woman because of her virtue. They start asking, who married the man? Who married the woman? Hey, because of the kind of woman you are, people see the woman in the market, the way she conducts herself. He say, Bikukonye no ronka. Who, who is the husband of this woman? The mass popularity increases. Go down. And when, okay, she make it fine linen and sell it, it and deliver it, gidos, unto the merchants. Fast, 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 fast. Strength and honor are her clothing. And she shall rejoice in time of, in time to come. Strength and honor, her clothing. So even when the man is weak, she's strong. You see, strong men has been made by strong women. Go and ask Ben Carson. He tells you the role the mother played in his life. Go and ask Abed Einstein. He will tell the role the mother played. Strength and honor. Okay. She opens her mouth with wisdom. Good. Very good. I like this point. You see character. This is character I'm discussing, you know. Attitude. This is what you need to look out for in a woman you are going to get married to. Or a man. This vice versa. He says, she opened her mouth with wisdom. And in her tongue is the law of kindness. So the man is bitter. He's a lion now. He's angry. Because you did not cook the food well. There's too much of salt in the food. He said, come here my friend. Are you mad? Why did you put too much of salt in this food? You are stupid. And of course the man didn't mean to insult you. Maybe because his, his boss anchored him in the office. So he comes back and transfers aggression. See what the foolish man does. Now listen to me, young man. You fool. I have not your house help. I do everything to please you. I wash your clothes. I wash your car. I do this for you. I do this for you. I do this for you. I gave you a baby. I gave you two. I gave you three twins. No other. And you're talking to me. Don't try it again. If you try it again, I won't cook. What is your problem? Don't even make me slap you. Hey. <laughs> Do you know guys already removing their clothes here? So go, what? What? And the woman is all around you. Imagine what would have happened if it was real life story. He says she opened her mouth in wisdom. The man is angry now. This man is hot. Do I go and vent another anger on him? What do I do? Keep quiet. 
you listen. Let him talk. If you can't take the words coming from him, maybe it's too harsh, it's so rash, and you want to pacify that thing, why not lie down on the ground? Knee down. Some ladies say, with my degree, nonsense. No, go on your knees. Honey, I'm sorry. Go and hold his leg. Let him hit you. Let's see. He won't do that. He says he's an animal. But if, if, if he's a person like me, at that point, I start crying. You go, honey, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do it. You see, I, I had a stressful day last night. I didn't sleep well. And this just happened. The man's admiration for you increase. The man's love and respect increase. In fact, that man repents instantly of that thing he said or did. He will never want to try it again. But you see the one who is still talking. The man is still talking. You are there forming Bado for him. Forming boss. Forming, you know, Queen Elizabeth and all that. You see the man pacing up and down. He's looking for another bullet to fire you. What is he trying to do? Not to damage you, to bend you. He wants to say, can I bend this woman? Can she apologize? It's like we'll stop at this second point. Go to the, the next verse. Let's finish because I don't have all the time. I'm already rounding up. She looketh well to the ways of her household and eateth not the bread of idleness. She's industrious. She's not lazy or idle. The next verse. Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also. And he praises her. Her children call her blessed. Oh, mama. Oh, woman. You are the best mother in the world. They call her blessed. Go down. And not just that they call her blessed. You see such women, they don't play with them. When those children become people in life and they start earning money, they become great people. You see the kind of, of honor the governor accorded the mother during her, even before she died. The kind of honor the children accord the woman. Why? Of the way they, because of the way the woman raised them. She must have been an industrious mother. They begin to reward you and bless you for the investment you've made in their lives. Many daughters have done virtuously, but thou excellent, but thou excellest them all. Yes? Verse 30. Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. The last verse. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own works praise her in the gates. So what is your virtue? What is your character like? What are you known to be? Hear me, you are a woman. If you don't have character traits, positive character traits or attitudinal traits, it does not matter how beautiful, how intelligent you are. The smallest boy will resist you. Go and check if these small babies, boys now. You are bullying them as you start coming up in life. You are with your elder sister. You start bullying them at a certain age. They start resisting you. It's a man naturally. Because one of the natural need of a man is his ego. When a woman starts fronting ego before a man, the man starts resisting the woman. Intentionally. That's when he does not care about you anymore. So women who are complaining of need, they are in need of this. My husband is not there. My fiance is not there for me. It is that nature. When you want to see that, become a better person unless if you attract something better. So watch your character traits. Are you humble? Are you nice with words? Okay, I show you a few examples in the Bible who were dethroned because of character flaws. Number one is Queen Vasti. If you read the book of Esther, you find out that Vasti was the queen of the king. And one time she was sent for. Oh, me Queen Vasti. Let her come and display her beauty so we may all see her and admire her. I know the woman did. Ah. Nobody can talk to me like that. Come on. I am the queen. I choose to come out anytime I want. When the king got that information, she said, that woman can no longer be my queen. She called the elders and inquired, what should we do to Vasti for this nonsense she has done? The elders suggested, let Vasti be put away immediately. Lest all the ladies in this palace, all the ladies in this kingdom, will begin to model after the example and start despising their husband's instruction. And they put her away. And another woman by the name of Esther replaced. Why? Not because Esther was more beautiful. Firstly, was beautiful also. But because Esther was beautiful. She had character. She had attitude. 
So Esther appears before the king. The king falls in love because of character. Because of attitude. And marries the girl. After a while, there was a big trouble in the land. A man called Haman put a conspiracy against the children of Israel. And the whole children of Israel were going to be destroyed or slaughtered because of that conspiracy. Now Esther learned about the conspiracy. And started devising a way to appease to the king. To let the king know the right thing about that matter. But the king had already given an, a decree that nobody should appear before him. He was angry. I said, nobody should appear before me. And Esther had the instruction, oh, what do I do? Because she was a spiritual woman, she went back and called the people. Had people and said, everybody should go and fast for me. Because I'm about to go into the king. I too, I'm going to go and fast for days without food and water. She went and fasted. But she, don't, she, she did not just do the spiritual. After she did the spiritual, she brought in attitude and character. How? She appeared before the king. I remember the king said, nobody should see me. But what did she come with? She didn't come now because she has fasted her hair. O King, live forever. I came by the word of the Lord to tell you that instruction you gave concerning my people will not work. It won't work. It won't work. Because I've prayed and God said to me, the king would have just done one hand like this. Hey, Vuga, come here. Carry this woman, throw in the trash can. And let her not appear here. Kill all of them now, now, now. Ki, 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 ki. The woman went in. With all the prayers she has prayed, though, she knew there is a place for the spiritual. There is a place for character. So she comes in quietly and says, Oh, king, live forever. King, the way I look at you, you are distressed and hungry. If it pleases you, king, your good wife has prepared you a fine banquet. And this banquet is not just for you. It's with one of your trusted men. He's by name Haman. I fixed the banquet for both of you, O king. If it pleases you, let my king stop being sad. I- I've missed you these few days. I, I thought you would pref- you would love to eat your favorite. While she was talking, the man forgot the law and the decree he made because of somebody's character. Do you know there are people, you go to some companies, they say no vacancy in this office because of character. Your character creates vacancy. There's no money. I don't have money to give you. Because of attitude, money comes out from nowhere. So the king forgot. He made a very dreaded law. And he said, okay, call him, him and let's go for, you know, for the banquet. And they went into the banquet. And they were eating. When the man ate one spoon, oh my God. Ah, it's been long. I tasted a meal like this. At the second one, the thing hit him again. At the third spoon. When the woman saw the guy has been caught by the meal, she now opened up. He said, oh king, I want to let you know something about that conspiracy or concerning Israel. He said, hey, what happened? Tell me, tell me. And she opened up. And they found that Haman was the one behind the conspiracy. And now the plot that he intended for Israel fell on him. And him and his household executed. Why? One woman redeemed the whole nation by attitude, by character, by wisdom. Can I talk to you about a normal called Rahab? Rahab. Two spies were sent to spy the kingdom called Jericho. After they had spied it, the king of Jericho discovered that there were spies in his kingdom and he sent men after them. These men were running for their life. A woman came out and demonstrated one simple character. Most ladies don't know how to demonstrate now. It's called kindness, compassion. She opened her door. Come, 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 come. Open her wardrobe and he hid them inside there. And the king of Jericho searched everywhere and didn't find them. And she released them to go. Before they left, they told the woman, ask what we shall do for you. The woman said, please, when you bring judgment to this city, remember me and my household. And they said, it shall be done to you according to your request. As we are coming, we are going to destroy. Nothing is going to be spared in this land. But please, put a red ribbon on your window. So that once we come, we will secure your house and destroy the rest of the houses. And she did as they said. Of course, when they came back to destroy the city, Joshua was with them, the king of Israel. And Joshua said to them, Remember that woman you told me about that spared your life. It's now time to keep your promise. Go first into the woman's house and make sure she's received her and her household before you bring destruction on this city. So the first thing they did when they got to Jericho was to rescue that woman and her household. Then they destroyed the whole city. Why? 
somebody's character and attitude. I don't know where you've been having some flaws. Maybe in the way you talk to people. I'm going to show you a few things just on this point. Then we close quickly. Sarah called her husband, Lord. This is somebody who is married to a man. You should call him anything you want to call him. though. But the Bible said, Sarah called Abraham, Lord, my Lord. It takes somebody who is reformed with him to treat a man like that. Character. Character. Let me show you some areas you must work on. You must demonstrate character. Now, let me say this before I say the other words. If you are lacking substance, principles, go home and make an item, and something like a list of those areas of your life where you are having flaws. Maybe it's in the area of how you talk. Maybe it's in the area of how you relate with people. Maybe it's in the area of how you, you know, do things generally. Make a list of them. And begin to adopt healthy life's principles and values. For instance, in places where you're not patient, begin to learn the art of patience. For instance, in places where you are not kind, begin to learn the art of kindness. In places where you cannot control your mouth, begin to learn how to control. A lady whose tongue runs anyhow is not the white material. Even a man. If you can't keep secret and truth, you're not a wife material. You're not a husband material. Because if you are good at discussing people, you discuss your husband. It's just a matter of time. And know you this, know you this. Every man and woman you are going to marry in life is still somebody God is working on. You're not marrying a perfect person. You are actually coming together as two imperfect people coming together to complete each other. That's why marriage is for compliments, not for supplements. Marriage is something that brings two imperfect people together to complete themselves, not to compete with themselves. It's something that is meant for compliments. So when you see a man who is having some little, little flaws, you don't know how to keep your mouth shut. You will go and call your friends one day. You saw that movie that day. She's now talking with the friends, describing her husband, washing your death party is a syndrome that destroys marriage. God must be your third cord that connects the two. We'll talk on this some other time. On how to make God the center of your home. Put God at the center of your home. We'll talk about this some other times. So you don't know how to breathe your tongue. You must go and work on that. Go and find out those areas you're having character flaws and begin to put framework on how to develop them there. Now, learn to keep secrets. Avoid gossip. Be a faithful person. These are some of the things that when you start working on, you have worked on your character. The Bible says that, see, he that errs in life is the one that errs in words. He said, if a man errs in life, he errs in nothing else but in words. If you want to test a man's character, the first place to check it is in his word life, his speech life. Can I show you from the Bible what the Bible says about words? There are many things they said about it. But this last scripture, and we are good to go. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 29. Very quickly. So the Bible talks about what? I don't care how good you think you are. If you destroy people with your mouth, you have a character problem. That is where you sit down with people. What comes out is something that defies them. Mm. You are complete. The Bible said, let no corrupt communication... And that translation said, let no unwholesome word proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of what? Of edifying. That it may minister grace unto the hearers. Anything you are saying that does not edify somebody, or that does not minister grace to the person who is hearing it, is a wrong word. If you sit down with a brother and what you are discussing is the flaws and the weakness of another person, but read the scripture. You have a character problem. <laughs> he that has has the matter of words, not the matter of deeds. It's the matter of words. I once posted it like this on Facebook. I said, "Which one do you want?" A Judas Iscariot who is a saint but who cannot keep your secret, or a Boko Haram member who can keep your secret. Which one do you want to be your friend? 
No, which one do you want? A Boko Haram member. Are you afraid of Boko Haram? Why do you want a Boko Haram member? If Judas is your best friend, but everything that happens in your life, he takes it out and publishes it. He's a saint too. But you have a Boko Haram member who can keep your secrets, who is faithful. Which one do you prefer? Church, answer. Remember, you're not answering for my good. You are answering for your own good. You are telling me that's what you would choose. Is that true? That's what you would choose. Okay. So why did you choose Judas? He goes to church. He's a pastor. He's Pastor Judas. He's in charge of the church finance. He's in charge of the church financial records. That's the good guy. Keep him. He's your friend. But when you finish doing meeting, he goes and tells the Philistines, or tells Pilate's men, or Herod's men, he said, we've just finished meeting. The next place he's going to be now is he's going to be at Abacha Market. He's going to be doing crusade there. He's going to sleep over there. He's going to pray. The best time to get him is 6 a.m. in the morning. That's when he comes. Because the guy who will betray you is your friend. Somebody who knows you in and out. Robbers cannot rob a bank until they find somebody within the premises who knows the ins and outs. True. Most robbery cases, the success of their robbery was an intel inside where they robbed. Your enemy doesn't know you. It's your friend who knows you. So your friend is invariably your enemy. Your enemy invariably is your friend. That's one area you must work on. If you have that problem, go and deal with it. It's a satanic problem you have. Okay. So speak nicely about people. Speak nicely to people. Learn to keep people's secrets. Learn to keep people's trust. Don't betray people. If you succeed at this, you are already succeeding in marriage. Because when your husband does something inside, you don't want the people outside to hear you. You hold it. Do you know women who are even faithful? When they have issues with their husband, you know how they do it. They mix so even their children don't know. Like they are quarreling with their husband now. That junior just opens up. Brr, mommy, I heard your voice on top of the this thing. He said, no, Junior, we're just playing. Come on, go and have a sleep. Go sleep. Honey, I'll be with you a few minutes. Let me take Junior up to the room. A foolish woman. He said, yes, don't mind your father. That's how he behaves. He's a stupid man. I'm tired of this marriage. You have destroyed that child. And some we even call their children and report. When they come up from school, they call their children, the five. Say, I want to gist you about your father. People don't know him. <laughs> your father is an animal. What this man do? You are a fool. Superhero fool. But go and check. That's what we are doing in church. You carry this brother, go and sit down somewhere around the table. And, you, fat, and you who is listening, you are digging your own grave. If you watch me carefully, you see when it comes to the matter of people, I don't know how to talk. I say, I can rate myself perfect there. Can rate me imperfect in any other area. When it comes to you, that thing that makes you you, that thing that you are, I don't know how to carry it outside. Ah, no, no, come, let's discuss. Nah. Man, dear Jennifer, dear. oh boy, Jennifer, hey. hey. Start nailing the guy, nailing the girl, and you are listening. I'm too busy that you can't even engage me in discussion about somebody. I don't even know how to talk about people. What you hear me talking about is programs, ideas, how to invade a city, how to do missions, how to do programs, how to carry out one kingdom project. That is what occupies me. You think I have time now to go to our people and go and call spies and say, come. How many of you know Emmanuel? That guy that plays bass in the church. Who knows Emmanuel's house? Eh, okay. Tell me how many girls who come to his house every day. Eh? Mm. Eh, I, I want to know how many clubs he goes to. No. Look, if you are right in your heart, you see people that way. A man who is right inside sees people right. You don't even see people's flaws easily. You don't. You don't. Can I shock you? Can I shock you? Finally, let me show you something. First Corinthians chapter 13. 
two of us use the word, I love, I love you, I love you, I love my wife, I love my woman, I love my girl, I love my man, I love my husband. But you don't yet know what love is. You can't, you can't build a healthy marriage until you understand this concept of love. Love is not a feeling, love is a nature. It's not something you feel. Can I say this that will shock you? What is the origin of love? The origin of love is not from God. The origin of love is God. Love does not come from God. Love is God. I don't know if you're following what I'm saying. Love does not come from God. God himself is love. The origin of love does not come from God. The origin of love is God. Now hear this. The seat. Hey. Okay, we are going to come to this. But let me say this this way. I think it will make sense to you. The seat of the love of God is his heart. Hear this. You want to know where God's love sits? The seat of the love of God is his heart. But the seat of God's nature is love. So God's nature is not in the heart. God's love sits on the heart. But God's nature resides in love. So you want to know God's image. God made man in his image. That is nature. The summary of the image is love. He made God in his image. That is in love. Have you wondered? Have you not wondered why the shape of your heart is that love symbol? If you look at the love symbol, if you look at the love symbol, hello, I'm rounding up, don't worry. Say, this is how they draw. Hello, this is how they draw the love symbol. This is the same way the heart is too. So the question is, why are both of them the same? Because you cannot talk about love without talking about the heart. The heart is where love is. But where God's nature is, is love. So let me now show you all the nature wrapped up in love. First Corinthians chapter 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have no charity, that's no love. What we are dealing with is character and attitude. It's a compatibility. If you find a man who does not have this thing, you find a woman who does not have it, wrong for your dear life. Because the summary of the Ten Commandments, or every commandment God has ever given, is wrapped up in love. In the, the book, in the, in the New Testament, when the Pharisees and Sadducees approach Jesus, they say, you are breaking the law of Moses. He said, no, I didn't come to break the laws. I came to fulfill the laws. And the fulfillment of the law is wrapped up in love. That means a man who has love doesn't need law. The law are for the lawless. A man who has love doesn't need law. Why should you tell me not to take your wife when I have love for you? Why should you tell me not to castigate you when I love you? The question I keep asking critics is all these people you are going around and criticizing you claim you love them. Has your criticism helped them? If you love a man, do you talk him down? If you love a man, do you poison him? Do you know you can poison not just with food. You can poison with the tongue. The Bible talked about controlling the tongue. The, the tongue is the smallest member of the entire body. Yet it can set the whole city on fire. That's why I never befriend a man. If I see a man, the Bible talked about cutting away from people who, if you read the book of 2 Timothy, down from verse 1, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 1, you will see some of those perilous times things he mentioned. He said, people who backbite, people who slander, he said, from such, stay away. You have a friend who is not faithful, quit that friendship. 
who cannot keep his mouth. You find out this guy can betray you behind. Keep that friendship away. Got it. The Bible gave that instruction. Cut it. That person will destroy you. So that's the way you must build your character. Once you build your character in love, how you really will change. What you do with it, because every sin problem is just break down a relationship. Every sin problem is break down a relationship. That's all. He said, though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels hey, and have no love, I am becoming a sounding brass or a tingling cymbal like the one on our drums. The next verse. And though I have the gift of prophecy, when I come here I can tell you things that has happened before and that will happen in the future. And understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, that's love. I am nothing. Go down. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, hypocrites, and though I give my body to be burned, can you imagine the level of what God, the intensity of what God is saying? Check yourself. I even surrender my body. Burn my body because I want to spark revival. And have not love. It profited me nothing. Everything people do in life, they do on the basis of this thing. How you serve God on the basis of this thing. How you relate to people on the basis of how you relate to your church on the basis of this thing. Whether you are good or bad on the basis of this thing. The next verse. Love suffers long and is kind. See the nature now. Can you not see the nature of love? It is love suffers long and is kind. Suffering long there is not that you are in poverty, you are in suffering. No. It's endurance. It's got long suffering. You can endure something. Do you know what has kept me going in life? In spite of everything people do to me, it is long suffering. If not, I would have hired as a sin for human beings since. Long suffering. Somebody was telling me a little issue she has with somebody, a friend. And how it has ruined her whole day. I was laughing at her. He said, I put you in one shoe. Just one. The one I've been, I've undergone. You will know what long, long suffering is even from patience. Long suffering is the great grandfather of patience. You see, it is kind. Love does not envy. Somebody told me vehemently, confess to me when we had an encounter. He said, Pastor, actually, I want to confess to you. He was confessing, I was writing it down. He said, I've always envied you, sir. So the person carries me and goes all over the town. And not long after, he did some mess and went there. And it confirmed the, 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 the confessions he was giving me. He didn't know the reason he was confessing all those things was to let me know why he does the things he does. God arrested him to tell me. He says, I envy you so much. I was, when I came back, when I saw your new car, it, it was not true love that brought me. It was envy. I wanted to know how, how manage, how manage. I didn't believe. One day I will teach you on a course titled Be careful about people. One day. That day I will dissect human beings. When I dissect human beings for you, the way you'll be walking in life, you'll walk so desperately. You'll walk with discretion. So, people have walked with me in such a way, I have learned them. You can forgive, but don't forget. No, where did you manufacture that lies from? Forgive and forget. The Bible did not say forgive and forget. The Bible says forgive one another. It is a forget. If you forget, you are a fool. 
you will repeat the same mistake. So when you see Oedipo, you come to see him. Two months you are still waiting. No, it was not like that. Before, if you want to see Oedipo, brr, anybody can, somebody may brr, you can see them anyhow. But they now know that there are people you give access to very quickly, they abuse it. So you see them put some of those things around. They are protecting the heart. They have learned through long suffering what it is. So you see me now put sarin on my car and put one well, poor man. You see it. I will be paying who I'm a poor man. Then get well trained protocol men, whether they are church members or not. I'll get them, train them, put them. Before you take one or two steps to come close, when they do like this, zoom, you will go back. He says, Sorry, can I see Pastor? So, wait there. Why? The man learned by experience that you don't trust people. The Bible says, Love all men. He said, Trust all men. You choose. How you trust. You choose who you trust. And trust is secured over time of proving yourself in a relationship. You don't just earn it. I love all of you, but I don't trust all of you. Hello? Is it making sense to you? I can love all of you. It's it's an instruction. Trust is not an instruction. Trust is a choice. So you see, long-suffering it does not envy. It does not vaunt itself. The next it is not puffed up. Go again. It does not behave itself unseemingly. It does not seek her own. It is not easily provoked. It does not think evil. You see love here. I don't think evil of you. I see what I want is the best for you. You share with me a testimony of what God is doing for you. I'm excited for you. I'm not thinking how to kill the guy now. Go down. It, it does not rejoice in iniquity. A brother falls. Go and pray for him. Don't go and rejoice and thank God he has fallen down. You see what people are doing. But you see what the Bible says about love. Go down. It beareth all things. It believes all things. It hopes all things. It endures all things. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Love never fails. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Yes? For we know in part and we prophesy in part. Quickly, quickly, quickly. But when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. Yes? When I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Yes. For now, we see through a glass darkly. But then, face to face, now I know in part. But then, shall I know, even as also I am known. And finally, and now, abided hope, abided faith, hope, and love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. When you see that word charity, it means love. The greatest of it all is love. This is where we are going to stop it for today. There are eight more to go. We have dealt with only two. But the reason I took up my time to deal with it is so you know the foundation of this thing. Why we are having crisis in homes. If this is your nature, it will just be marrying like water. You won't even need to. You see, the first I dealt with is spiritual compatibility. Now you see, the second I have dealt with now is this issue of character. What is character? Love. 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 What is attitude? Love. The summary of it. If you have love, you you are an embodiment. It is easy to build all these values into you. Very easy to build all those values. When you don't have love at all, there's not anybody saying that makes sense to you. Have you been blessed this morning? It's not hard to have a successful marriage. Just get right within you. Get your heart right. What is your heart like? What are your values? Once your values are right, your life is right. You see, in church, we have what we call core values. Core values are simply... The expressions, the expressions, the expressions, 
the expressions of your nature. That's your core values. Your values talk about your nature. I just want to give you a few minutes to talk to God. Just talk to God. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.